Hey, hey, welcome back to another video of mine. Today I'm going to be looking at some more really terrible weapons. 15 more, I felt that would be pretty appropriate, pretty fair, pretty balanced, some might say. So far, the balance changes that I proposed in the first video have been pretty well received. You know, people are pretty happy with what I've been cooking up. This fella says that I cooked the whole stove. Surely that must be a good thing. Anyways, it's gonna be in the same order as last time, you know, scout to spy. Let's just get into it, shall we? First up, I'm gonna be reworking the backscatter. You know, it's not the worst weapon ever, but it's not exactly the best. The first change that I wanna put onto this thing is that it crits targets when fired at their back from any range. I also wanna make it 20% more accurate, but with the downsides of minus 99% clip size and no random crits. So my idea actually for this thing is to completely change the weapon into a one pellet projectile firing weapon at a time. You know, just from the design of it, it looks like it should just fire something else. And I thought one pellet might be cool. And yes, you did hear me correctly. There's no gamer gunk in your ears. Maybe there is, and that's fucking gross. But either way, you are not mistaken. I made it so that if you hit someone in the back from any range, it gives you a crit. And that is very powerful. And uh, anyways, let's just move on to the holy mackerel. I know this is just a stock reskin. But it's such a unique weapon that I wanted to make it stand out from the plethora of other stock reskins. So I propose that on hit players are given the Sam Onella effect. What I'm thinking is that it's just bleed damage with gas passer shit on the screen. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And the downside to this weapon is that maximum health is drained while the item is active. My idea behind this is that the fish is so stinky that it lowers your health as you hold it. Alright, next up we're moving on to Soldier. Now, I always thought it was strange how this weapon never did any damage. Like, what's the, what's the point in having a primary weapon that doesn't do any damage? It's just very strange and I always thought it was kind of useless, you know? Like, why? Why would you ever pick this over anything else? Ugh. Anyways, I'm keeping the plus 200% max primary ammo on wear. I'm keeping the no self-inflicted blast damage taken because I really like that stat. I actually think all the all the rocket launchers should have that, but you know, one video at a time, of course. I'm also giving it a plus 55% damage bonus because I really want this thing to be a heavy hitter. You know, for so long it's been the weakest, and I want it to be the strongest. So I feel like I feel like that would be pretty fun. Of course, the downsides are that it gets no random crits and that it mini crits whenever it would normally crit while well, you're airborne. And that's what I think the rocket jumper should be, you know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Alright, next up we've got another shared weapon between soldier and demo. We got the pain train. I made it so that this weapon deploys and holsters slower. It's got a plus six capture rate on wear, you know. I thought the plus two, it's useful but not useful enough. I want this thing to be used when it's right at the end of the game and you're held back by the other team and oh, they've wiped out your whole team. Oh, fuck. So you whip this bad boy out, you head over to the point, and it instantly captures because you've got six people on your team, basically. Of course, you can still use this with your team, and it's... Uh, but, uh, I mean, we don't have to worry about that part. Just use it the way I want it to be used, please. Uh, anyways, uh, you get a plus two primary ammo capacity on wear. You get a minus 14 secondary ammo on wear. And you can't be healed by any source. So, no medics, no med kits, nothing. You just cannot receive any healing whatsoever. It's a one and done, th uh, a one and done selection, if you will. Pyro's Man Melter has always seemed like a strange case to me, because it's just sort of the lamest option to use, really. It, it doesn't crit people on fire, it, it, it all it really does have a faster projectile that's kind of confusing to aim when you're used to aiming anything else. You know, the sucking your other teammates off is kind of a strange mechanic, it's just, I don't think it belongs in the game, it's pretty graphic and frankly I think it's wrong but whatever we don't have to really get into the politics of this of this weapon because I know it's very controversial anyways let's get into the changes that I made to it I basically made this a completely different weapon so this weapon spews lava that sticks to the floor dealing full afterburn think something like Torbjorn's ultimate or whatever it is I, I think it's his current ultimate I don't fucking I don't play that game anymore anyways of course I still have it so that the weapon reloads automatically when you don't have it active does not require ammo 
still no random crits and also get a 35 percent accuracy penalty this is just more to make the weapon spew like i want it to so the sharpened volcano fragment is kind of cool if it was for literally any other class when you look at it it seems pretty cool you hit someone and then they get set on fire that's pretty awesome but it's for pyro he can already just set people on fire without really having to get that close it's it's just kind of completely antithetical to pyro's design and it's kind of fucking stupid so i wanted to make it a little more useful and I did what anyone would naturally do. I made it on hit bleed for 8 seconds. And of course to go with that I gave it a plus 27% damage bonus, a plus 50 air blast cost on wear, and I gave it this neat little thing where it breaks upon hitting the ground, wall, props, and really anything besides a player. And it must recharge for 25 seconds, you know, similar to this bicycle. And of course that beautiful stat that us pyros love to see, the plus 100% damage to sun on a stick users. Like I said in the first video, I just thought it would be really cool to have this thing actually very similar to the, um... The, like, like the alien uh, sets for Scout and Pyro. And just like in that one, the Scout gets bent over and fucked. So this is what I believe makes a much more interesting and more powerful, more usable, really, Sharpened Volcano Fragment. Because it's a super cool fucking axe, and it, it just deserves better. Speaking of super cool axes that should do more, we're talking about the third degree now. I thought it would be cool if it crits players connected to a medigun, and that on hit, health steal while medigun is active. So basically, while that medic still has a medibeam on the person that you hit, you also heal that, and then when he takes the beam off, off, you stop getting that health. I was thinking something along the lines of the Scythe from TF2 Classic, but of course I had to balance this out with a minus 25 max health on wear, and I also thought it would be cool if you just got less healing from medics. You know, if you're gonna get healing from the enemy team, I think it would only be fair if you got less from your main team, you know what I'm saying? Another pyro melee. Most of his melees are fucking trash. Uh, we got the hot hand. What I thought would make it a little better is if you got a speed boost after killing someone and to make it easier to kill someone you get a plus 15 percent damage bonus and a plus 32 percent faster firing speed i feel like this would maybe make it easier to kill people with it thus making the hot hand less of a just absolute joke because it's, it's genuinely unusable in the state that it's in right now and oh yeah i totally forgot you also get a 25 percent explosive damage vulnerability on where i feel like you know if you're gonna be smacking people it better not be demo or soldier <laughs> we got the first only demo weapon on here which is the ulapool caber uh this thing is kind of donkey shit uh so i want to change it to be a little different so upon explosions debris burst out in every direction of course if this debris hits someone they get bleed for eight seconds uh this weapon gets a plus 50 percent damage bonus because i really want these explosions to be you know i want them to be something you know a real spectacle to behold now to compensate for this severe damage buff i gave it a 20 percent slower firing speed uh the weapon deploys 150 percent slower uh, gets no random crits, and explosions and debris can hit friendly players. Now, in the first video, I had a stat where the Righteous Bison could damage friendly buildings, and I thought, you know, what would this game need more than anything? Of course, it's friendly fire, you know, this game would be even better if there was friendly fire, so I, you know, I thought it would be kind of cool to incorporate that into some of these weapons, and this is one of those. So I thought it would be kind of cool if, the, if either the debris or the explosion uh, are any anywhere near your teammates, they can also die. Again, tell me what you think in the comments about this one. I think this is a pretty neat design. Another route you could go down is making this thing do times three damage to buildings. I think that would be pretty good because as we know, Demo has no way to take down buildings. So I think something like that would be cool. But ultimately I settled on this set of stats because I feel like the Ulapool Caber that we have now is just very neutered from the one that we had before, and switching it back is just silly. <laughs> Why would you do that? Let's just give it some new stats, which are very good. Speaking of very good, the Pompson 6000 actually uh, is uh, pretty good, but I wanted to rework it anyways. It still doesn't require ammo, the projectile still can't be deflected, uh, I gave it a plus 39% projectile speed, because these projectiles are genuinely unusable from long range. I added this cheeky little stat where projectiles delete ammo from enemy dispensers and sentries. I thought that deleting cloak and uber was a little fucking stupid. You know, it drains what the other classes work so hard for. And as we know, engineers don't work at all for their buildings. So I think it's only fair to just 
take ammo from all of them. However, it still only deals 20% damage to the buildings, so while it's not doing very much damage to them, it's uh, it's more of just kind of annoying, I think. Uh, this also gets a times two reload time, because like I said, it's going to be really fucking annoying. So uh, yeah, that's my new Pompson. I feel like it would be kind of cool. Here we go. We got the short circuit now. Primary fire is completely unchanged, uh, besides a minus 10 ammo instead of whatever the frick it is, like 12 or whatever the hell. I don't, I don't know. But other than that, the alt fire launches a projectile consuming energy ball, cost 70 metal. We all know this one. Uh, pretty sure I tweaked the number. I honestly can't remember. I don't have the original stats up, but it now costs 70. You don't have to reload. You don't get random crits. Still uses metal for ammo. And I, again, with this friendly fire motif, I thought it would be kind of cute if the projectile could also delete friendly projectiles. Because as we know, the biggest pain in the ass to everyone is when engines will just sit on the cart and spam this thing. So I thought it would maybe discourage them from doing that if it also fucks over his team. So, you know, maybe this is a way to combat that. Now on to the most broken class in the game, Sniper. And it's Cleaner's Carbine. Uh, this thing isn't too bad, but I wanted to make a couple changes to it because I thought I could do... Honestly, I thought I could do it better than the fucking schmuck who made this thing. So here we go. The secondary fire, when charged, coats enemies in Jurati for 28 seconds. Dealing damage fills this charge meter. Uh, it has a 12% tighter spread for just that, just, just a little bit more precision. It's got a minus 20% clip size and a 12% slower firing speed. So the Spicicle's a piece of shit and I wanted to change it just a little bit. Just a teensy, le teensy little bit so it's a little less terrible. So on hit by fire, you're fireproof for 10 seconds and get afterburn immunity for 27 seconds. Of course, when you hit someone, uh, not backstab, uh, when you get just a regular melee swing in, you know, those butter knives, you know, we all, we all get them. So I wanted to, you know, help compensate, make this a little better for those butter knifers out there. Um, bleed for eight seconds, of course, because it really inflicts that psychological damage that is crucial to this game. Of course, the backstab victims still turn to ice. I made it so that the victim's screams reverberate inside the ice, making them louder and more distinct. Melts in fire and regenerates in 15 seconds and by picking up ammo. I, I honestly can't remember if I changed any of the time there. Anyways, yeah, Spicicle makes it a little more useful because right now it's a lie and a deception and if I see you use it, you're banned from the channel. Alright, the last weapon we're going to be talking about is the Red Tape Recorder. This thing is downright unusable because uh, it just doesn't do anything. You know, in, in the time that it takes for this thing to de-level a sentry or build building, the, the engineer's already gotten to it, and it's not even halfway through, so it's just, it's just, it's stupid, it takes too long, and it's just basically useless when you've got this sapper. So I wanted to change it a little bit, still have the reversing enemy building construction thing, but I thought it'd be cool if it had this effect of silent sapper. The engineer is not warned when the sapper is placed. He is, there, there, there's, it doesn't show up on his little UI thing, there's no noises, it's completely silent. It's, it's, it's sort of like the, the silent backstab but for sappers so it, it, it does the exact same thing actually uh it just makes it a little harder for the engineer to find out uh but this sapper takes 35 minutes to reactivate and i think that's a pretty fair trade-off for this thing you know it's uh, very it's very powerful almost guaranteed to win it every single time so i think 35 minutes is a pretty fair cooldown but uh yeah those are my proposed weapon fixes tell me what you think in the comments do you hate them do you love them if you're gonna protest tell me where I'll be there. So, uh, yeah. See you in the next one. Ka-chow.